we've, we've been meeting with a lot of public officials, including the President of the Republic, the Prime Minister, the Minister of Information, uh, some other media stakeholders, and I would say that um, we, we noticed that the situation has improved uh, for the media. Uh, I would say that the, the landscape is a bit more uh, healthier than it was before. Uh, there are now legal protection for, for journalists, you know. I've been here in 2013, uh, uh, in 2015, 2017, so I, I, I made uh, several visits to the country and I, I can say that the situation from the legal point of view has improved. I'm still worried. I'm still worried because I don't see from the public officials a recognition of the role of journalists in the society. Uh, you know, we are supposed to serve the, the public interest. Uh, we are the ones allowing citizens to uh, access independent information, so to have a, a clear view on the society citizens need journalists and journalism. And this role is not recognized by the state in, in North Macedonia. When, when we discussed with uh, ministers, except maybe the, the, the president of the republic, uh, but the others, they told us about business. Uh, you know, they, they, they consider media and journalism as a, a normal business, like other businesses, like, uh, I don't know, selling apples or... And that's not the point, you know. It's a specific profession. It's necessary for democracy to have a, a strong journalistic uh, landscape, I would say. And it seems they don't recognize that role. Uh, and that means that they are not taking actions to support journalism, not to support media companies, that's not the, the main point, you know, to support journalism and to support the right of citizens. Because, again, when, when I'm supporting or promoting media freedom, it's not about promoting the rights of journalists, it's about promoting the right of citizens to access information. So it's really related to the rights of citizens. Uh, that's my view, uh, and I think it's the view of most journalists uh, in Europe and worldwide. But that's not the view of the government. When they speak about journalism, they, they consider media as an economical actor, a financial actor. We've been informed by the Prime Minister and the Minister of Information of a new law to allow uh, the state uh, to uh, promote and, and to pay for uh, public campaigns in the media. So that would be a way to fund media companies. But we are not fully satisfied with that. Uh, we are not satisfied at all <laughs> with that proposal because that proposal will not improve the quality of, of journalism. There are other ways, other options. If you really want uh, to promote journalism and uh, the, the public service. Many countries are developing what we call uh, media pluralism funds. So funds, public funds, uh, dedicated to support quality journalism, ethical journalism, uh, diversity uh, in the media, uh, better journalism, uh, to better serve the society. Uh, so when we consider, and we consider journalism as a public good, it's normal to, to, to put some public money into journalism, even if it's, if it's provided by private companies. You know, journalism provided by a private company is a public service, it's a public utility. Uh, we all need, uh, and we need a balance between public broadcasters and private uh, media. So, yes, to, to have a healthier landscape, ecosystem, uh, it's normal uh, for the state to provide some funds. Uh, of course, it should be done in a fully independent way, so without any interference from the politicians into uh, the allocation of funds. And it should be uh, based uh, on very objective criteria. Many countries in Europe, Belgium, France, uh, uh, the Netherlands, uh, plenty of countries have similar funds uh, to support uh, the diversity of the media and to support journalists, not media companies as per, per se. We've been surprised to uh, to know during our uh, mission that only 17 journalists from the public broadcaster are covering the regions, you know, all, all the other journalists from the public TV are based in Skopje, and the 17 disseminated in the regions are, they don't have contracts, they are freelancers, they work for other media, so 
they don't have good working conditions. That is not normal. The media landscape in Macedonia is very polarized because the society is very polarized. And disinformation is a problem. And th the best way to tackle disinformation is precisely to support good journalism, ethical journalism. If you respect ethical rules, and the main rule, the rule number one for, for ethical journalism is to respect the truth, you know, to tell the truth, <laughs> uh, then you are fighting disinformation. So the best way to fight disinformation is to promote, uh, to support ethical quality journalism. I recognize the level of disinformation and maybe the interference and maybe the interference of foreign states. The President of the Republic told us about uh, uh, the role of Chinese uh, uh, companies or uh, Russian uh, companies, you know, supporting uh, some, by, by funds, uh, some media outlets in, in Macedonia. I, I'm not a member of, uh, you know, the, the, the security services, so I don't know if it's true or not. I, I believe him, but if it's true, the best way to solve that problem is to invest to, in, in good journalism, in ethical journalism. The good way to fight disinformation is media literacy, you know, to, to help citizens to recognize by themselves, to make the difference between a reliable information and, and, and uh, an information which is biased. It's, there are programs, so it's possible to, to do that, to educate people. Um, so that's the first point. And the second point is to promote ethical quality journalism. I'm a bit worried also by the, the, the fact that there is no renewal uh, for the profession. You know, uh, I think only nine uh, students uh, are uh, following the courses uh, in uh, communication and journalism faculties, which is very few, you know, that means that and I think that is related with the fact that the public officials are not recognizing the role of journalists in the society. You know, it's not attracting for a young uh, citizen in Macedonia to do that job uh, because the job is not well paid, not recognized, uh, it's difficult, it's harsh, you will face threats, intimidation, so why to, why to do that job, uh, some other jobs in communication field, for example, are more, much more uh, comfortable. So uh, it's all in one, you know, there is no global policy to support journalism as a strong, uh, I would say, actor in, in the society.